the promises that are to me by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. I will never see the wrath of God. I will never be in condemnation because of Jesus Christ. Without Jesus Christ, you'll be tormented. You'll be in damnation forever. And Christ came that you may have life. These things have I written unto you that you may know assurance is in the Word. The Bible says in Titus, Titus 2, 13, looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that we might redeem us from all iniquity, purify unto himself a particular people, zealous of good works. First John. First John one. First John one nine. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You can be made clean. Jesus said, "Ye must be born again." You were born wrong. You were born in sin. Today can be a new birthday in your life by coming to Calvary and asking God to save you by the mercy, by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Life doesn't begin at 30. Life begins at Calvary. Life begins with the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ as your name is written down in the last book of life. And there forever you'll be with the one that made you. That is what we're preaching. Proverbs. Behold the eyes of the Lord in every place. Behold the evil and the good. God is looking down Proverbs chapter 15 verse 3. And he sees everything going on. You better watch out. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. Jesus is coming to town. Jesus is the one that knows what you're doing right now. He knows everything. He'll bring it before judgment, before everyone. Everything that you do, it says in Matthew, every idle word that man shall speak, you shall give an account thereof. It says in Matthew, if you look upon a woman that lusts after his heart, you've already committed adultery with her. All these acts will come out unless... You confess your sins, and God is faithful and just to forgive you your sins, and be washed. Isaiah says, chapter 1, Come, let us gather together. I'll read it to you. An invitation of God, even to our fine gentleman here, who wants me to be quiet while he talks himself. Come, sir. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Come. God brings a message to you to come. Let us. That's God in you reasoning. That is God saying, come to me and we'll sit down with my word. I will show you. Reason together, saith the Lord. God is reasonable. God is long-suffering. God is loving. That He wants to sit down with you and to tell you about His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ.
That's what he wants to hear. God wants you to come. He wants you to sit upon. And he wants you to reason with you. He says, Though your sins be as scarlet, a stain that cannot be removed by man, a stain that cannot be removed by religion, it's a stain there that everyone sees. You may not think people know what your problems are, but some do. You can't hide. But Proverbs 15.3, The eyes of the Lord in every place behold the evil and the good. If people don't know, God knows. God knows exactly who you are and what you are. He's the one that made you. And in, your, in, in His eyes, without Jesus Christ, you are scarlet stained. And there is no help. There is no hope for that stain to be put away by man. They shall be white as snow. Pure, clean snow. He said, What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. What must I do? First John 1 John 1.9 again. First John 1 John 1.9 If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Listen, my sins, what sins are you talking about? They're under the blood. What sins are we talking about to you? Is it under the blood or will it be made manifest? Will everything come out? Every closet, every darkened room, everything that even your mother don't know will be brought out by God unless you come and confess your sins before God, before the Lord Jesus Christ, and put them under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ to be washed, to be cleansed, to be made holy, only by Jesus. What can wash away your sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Come now. Come as you are. A vile, wretched sinner. The condemnation of off to hell you will go if you will die without Christ. Come. Reason. Meet with God. What will you give? What will a man give for the exchange of his soul? How much is your soul worth? What is the price of your soul? Acts 20.28 20, says the precious blood of God, who is Jesus, and Jesus is God. Your soul is so precious, it took the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the price that God will receive and only will receive. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Jesus was a quiet man. Uh, if you read the Bible, ma'am, Jesus preached on the streets. The apostles preached on the streets, just like we're doing. Mount, uh, the Mount. He preached the Sermon on the Mount. was out loud to everybody, ma'am. He had to yell for people to hear him. 4,000, 5,000 people heard him. He had to speak loud. Come on. He's going to speak to 4,000 people. Hi, right, people. How you doing? You gotta be loud. So all can hear. You got to hear that Jesus saves. That's a blessed news. That's a blessed hope. Yeah, you know, when this ball game's going on here, they're shouting and cheering on you don't yell. Hey guys, be quiet over there. No. But when you hear the words of a preacher and the words of the Bible, hey, shut up. No. They can do it, I can do it. Their joy's in a stupid white little ball. My joy's in the Lord Jesus Christ and the gospel. To proclaim that He died for me. He saved 
me, that excites me, that gets me going, that is all news above all news, that's what gets me excited, the gospel. You look at these fans of these sports and how they get all dressed up and funny looking and stupid and all that, hey. So angry. No, it's not angry, man. It's, you gotta, uh, you gotta put your voice out. No, you gotta be heard. It's amplification. No. If I was selling beer, man, would it be angry? I'd say, "Loud, come and get your free cup. Come get your free cup." No, see, see. It's so you can hear. You know, we grew, we're in a nation today where a man preaches to you, you think, oh, he's angry. He's mad. No, we, we love you. We're out here because we love you. You think religion loves you? Well, they. 